1977, a new sound emerged from Belgium with the violin cello chamber rock of Universe Zero and from their self-titled debut album, alternately known as 1313, the track Dr. Petiot. Already, um, a lot of nervous, frantic strings playing. I'm wondering um, already what the plot of this is. I just uh, did a Google, I just did a highlight, uh, right click, search Google for the name, and it says Marcel Petiot. French serial killer and there's all these like spooky like black and white photos of him <laughs> there's one with his eyes just like bolt he's looking to the side of the camera his eyes are bolt oh my god I <laughs> opened up a can of worms here <laughs> Um, goes through a lot of um, drummerless sections, but that no 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 that really holds that 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 create that that creates a rhythmic component to this, regardless of whether um, we go through dr drum through drummerless passages. Got some great violin work that's just like going right down the middle. That no 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 no. That when you, the the drumming that is there in these in these drum sections, it sounds more like like um, a mixture of like <clears throat> I don't know explosives and debris flying around. That that's kind of kind of the ambience that's being created here. Already, I feel like I've been thrown into just some scene. This, this, uh, oh, oh, just this, this horrific scene of, of like smoke everywhere, of, of of just destruction, wreckage, carnage, dead bodies, you know, lying on the ground. <laughs> This this um right here conveys like um heart palpitations like like people in fear are they next I, I I've got a I, I'm gonna be reading about this guy. <laughs> that that per that percussion work just uh, uh, create creates so much like. Uh, tension and like I have got to um read up okay Marcel Andre Henry Felix Petiot January uh born January 1897 uh, January 17th 1897 died May 25th 1946 was a French doctor and serial killer 
He was convicted of multiple murders after the discovery of the remains of 23 people in the basement of his home in Paris during World War II. Huh. So, like a French John Wayne Gacy. He is suspected of the murder of around 60 victims during his lifetime, although the true number remains unknown. Well, so in some ways, my, my imagery of, like, lots of dead bodies is kind of matching the story here. Okay, back to the song, I'm going to read a little bit more. Okay, um, in this one section it says, after the 1940 defeat, uh, German defeat of France, French citizens were drafted for forced labor in Germany. Pettyot provided false medical disability certificates to people who were drafted. He also treated the illnesses of workers who had returned. In July 1942, he was convicted of over-prescribing narcotics, even though two addicts who would have testified against him had disappeared. He was fined. Okay, um... So I, I do, oh my God, there's some photos, uh, some old um, newspaper scans of, of, I guess, people finding where bodies were buried. Oh God, this is really <laughs> spooky. This section right here, um, this harmonium section, could be uh, meant to portray the, or the spinet section, yeah. The, um, on this album, Emmanuel Nikai plays harmonium and spinet. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the spinet is a smaller type of harpsichord. Um, the, yeah, so this is the spinet then. Um, this section of the, of the track could be um, an attempt to portray the uh, minutes leading up to the discovery of the bodies. And I just came to that section of the article on here. Um, discovery of murders. On 11th March 1944, Pediot's neighbors in Rue La Sur complained to police about a foul stench in the area and large amounts of smoke billowing from a chimney of the house. Uh, it's, it's kind of sounding similar to the way John Wayne Gacy's crimes were discovered. Fearing a, a chimney fire, the police summoned firemen who entered the house and found a roaring fire in a coal stove in the basement. In the fire and scattered in the basement were human remains. Yeah, a, a lot of these details are kind of similar to what the music was conveying in my head the most. The moment I found out that this was uh, an instrumental depiction of the saga of a serial killer. In addition to his basement, a quick time pit in the backyard contained human remains as well as a canvas bag, which also contained human remains. In his home, enough body parts were found to make at least ten, vic uh, ten victims. I'm sorry. Ugh. Also scattered throughout his property were suitcases, clothing, and assorted property of his victims. Um, I haven't gotten to the part where I found out... I, I haven't yet learned about how he killed these people, whether it was through um, over-prescribing them, drugging them, or, or whether he, he actually just struck them dead, impaled them, you know...
Yeah, this seems like they're going through like a cavernous, dench laden, smoky environment, you know, looking for like dark, looking, wondering what's around the corner, wondering what's ahead, you know. <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, trial, um, evasion and capture, trial and sentence. Uh, let's see. After the bodies were discovered, uh, Petty had hid with friends, claiming that the Gestapo wanted him because he had killed Germans and informers. During the liberation of Paris in 1944, Pettiot adopted the name Henry Valéry and joined the French forces of the interior, FFI, in the uprising. He became a captain in charge of counter-espionage and prison interrogations. When the newspaper Resistance published an article about Pettiot, his defense attorney... Okay, skipping over a little bit. The search began anew with Henry Valéry among those who were... Finally, on, on 31st October um, 1944, I guess... Pettiot was recognized at a Paris metro station and arrested. Um, among his possessions were a pistol, and blah, blah, blah. Trial and sentence. Pettiot was imprisoned in La Santé prison. He claimed that he was innocent and that he had only, and that he had killed only enemies of France. He said that he had discovered the pile of bodies in 21 Le in, but had assumed that they were collaborators killed by members of his resistance. Network. So he, he was making up excuses, he, I, I guess trying to use um, just the all the the ensuing fracas of 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 like uh world war ii to, as an alibi um but the police found that Pettiot had no friends in any of the major resistance groups some of the resistance groups he had spoke of had never existed and there was no proof of any of his claimed exploits prosecutors eventually charged him with at least 27 murders for profit their estimate of his Gains, okay, so he was killing for, I'll have to go back and, um, I'm kind of skipping to the parts where, that I think might correlate to, um, okay, uh, skipping over the rest of the trial and sentence. On 25th May of 1946, I guess, yeah, his trial was in March of 1946, so 25th May, Pettiot was beheaded after a stay of a few days due to a problem in the release mechanisms of the guillotine. Uh, this is going to be quite a story to unpack. Um, I'm wondering if um, any of those true crime YouTubers have, have done this case. Yeah. learn a few things about the people who are making these unique sounds. Um, Emmanuel uh, Nikai or Nikais is the harmonium spinet player. A according to Discogs, no credits beyond this this one album. That's huh, strange. Um, Bassoon by Mikkel uh, Berkmans. And uh, this person went on to play on um, at least uh, on a few more trials. But yeah, play, went on to become pretty much a mainstay of Universe Zero. Also played on uh, Music Pour Relay, Odyssey by Art Zoid. Um, I actually was on quite quite a lot of the uh, releases um, in this vein, like Hulverne's On Nuff, another like chamber classic, chamber folk classic. I, I describe that one as. I wouldn't really call it rock. Um, and Fred Frith's Gravity and um, Axak Mobul's second album. And uh, Von Zamla's No Makeup. Yeah, th this so this person was, was in the uh, the avant chamber rock scene quite uh, prolifically. I guess a full-fledged member of Hulvern, Von Zamla, Universe Zero, and Art Zoid at, at different times. Um, Electric Bass by Christian Je Jennett. Um, let's see, 
27 credits in all according to Discogs. A few more Universe Zero titles was on used Heat Wave. Was on uh the one of the was on the first present album. Yeah, the one with the long title. Um so has been heard quite a bit in this exact vein of music. Present Universe Zero and Present being like closely connected. Um guitar by Roger Tregox. I know this guy quite well. He's been like a, he's been a mainstay yeah, pretty much the mastermind behind present and uh yeah it's on all the present albums the driving force behind it um and uh <clears throat> daniel dennis of course i know he was on a lot of these albums and even did some solo stuff in the early 90s um and uh who else violin marcel dufresne Huh, only this this album and no other credits and violin violet cello patrick hennapier 19 credits according to discogs and a few a few other universe zero titles and uh huh eh. andre bialek huh that's 1976 Johnson album i think i i think i've maybe bookmarked something by him before. I'll have to see what that's like. <clears throat> Something's about to happen, but before it does, uh, a few, a little bit more info here. He's been portrayed in three movies, or he's had characters based on him, at least. Let's see. The 1957 war film Seven Thunders includes an almost identical character, Dr. Martu, played by James Robertson Justice. The 1973 film The Crimes of Pediat, directed by Jose Luis Madrid, and starring Paul Nashi as... Pediat drew inspiration from Pediat's criminal career. The 1990 film Dr. 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 Pediat uh, dramatizes his life and career. Um, in literature, he is mentioned as part of the backstory for Manning Cole's book Crime and Concrete, published in 1960. Um, in eh, television, I don't care. Oh, and in music, the eponymous 1977 debut album by Universe Zero includes a track named Dr. Pettyot. Um, huh, so this is the only only music media that's referenced him in any way. Um, let's see. Uh, an interesting thing about how he tried to um, use, um, use uh, wartime um, def defense effort, resistance efforts as kind of subterfuge for um, his crimes. Uh, let's see, it says, at first, Pettyet dumped the bodies in the Seine, but he later destroyed, oh yeah, the Seine, yeah, as I was, um, I was talking about that in that video to, um, that I did months ago to, uh, about, a. Thank God It's Not Christmas by Sparks, yeah. If this were the same, you'd be very suave. Uh, but he later destroyed the bodies by submerging them in quick lime or incinerating them. Uh, and um, let's see. A bit earlier it says, um, in relationship to World War II, Pettyet later claimed that during the period of German occupation, he was engaged in resistance activities. Allegedly, he developed secret weapons that killed Germans without leaving forensic evidence, planted booby traps all over Paris, had high-level meetings with Allied commanders, and worked with a non-existent group of Spanish anti- uh, worked with a non-existence, as they say, par parenthetical, group.
group of Spanish anti-fascists. So basically, his his what he hoped to be his alibi was that, um, which is all the confusion, all the malay that was on with um, the German occupation, all the bombing, all the violence, all the warfare in the streets, that there would be bodies lying around, that there would be random people, random enemies killed. And he was just hoping that his murder victims could be disguised, you know, in the aftermath of World War and the confusion. And that, that, that France, that, that, that the, you know, the f French government and law enforcement would be just too busy with reclaiming France, rebuilding France, recovering from the war, and and um, caught up in its, you know, um, hatred towards towards the Germans, that, that it would be an easy sell, that the, the alibi would be an easy sell, you know, and that they would be too preoccupied anyway to really look beneath the surface and, and everything. And <laughs> Uh, Daniel Dennis's rhythmic figures it's it's like a, a few like snares here then a few like like you know click clock or it, it's like this call and response between between like like <clears throat> oh, oh like different toys and objects and everything it's and if and the way he creates that symbol spray, it, it it really conjures up like like imagery of like smoke and dust blowing up everywhere, it, and and just just the kind of like ambience that you need when you're um, conveying a scene where people are discovering like this underground morgue. <laughs> That that slashing like like that faint but kind of really piercing high violin that it's so like kind of like cutthroat. It's like a sting. It's like it, it, I don't know. It's like like wandering in the. It, it, it's like walking. It's like suddenly getting, having like a like a wire just pulled around your neck or something. It's. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe maybe just one way that that victim that people could have been, you know, victims could have been claimed, you know, just coming up behind them with a barbed wire and around the neck. I've yet I've yet to get to the details of of what he did, and but um, I uh, this this video has already had a few more gory details than I anticipated when I began. Um, so that's the thing. My my the, these videos are are like reactions, are like first time reactions in a sense that I end up learning things that I didn't know about music that I've known for a long time. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I I had no idea that this video was going to be so long and that so much of it was going to be about talking about a serial killer. <laughs> anyway. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of, U of Universe Zero, see the directory of albums by Belgian artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the track we just heard, its complexities, the instrumentation, the harmonics of it all. 
And um, <clears throat> till next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air travel tri-maximalist, signing off.